Welcome to the third video in the series of how to build a bike generator. This one is all about whether you should use an AC motor or a DC motor or an alternator as the generating source for the bike generator project. It's the third part of the series. I'd suggest you watch at least the first one before this one. Uh, that gives you an overview of this generating machine, it gives you a demonstration of how it works and shows you charging stuff and all that kind of thing and I give you a bit of a tour of it. Uh, there's a link in the description below for that one. There's also a step-by-step -step video which shows the basic process of building this up from scratch using the materials. This video is all about the most common question that people have asked me about this generator and that seems to come up when building a bike generator project which is whether you should use an AC motor or a DC motor. So first of all I'm just going to limit the discussion. I'm going to tell you what the parameters of this discussion are because it, it's such a big subject we could go down a real rabbit hole with it. So I'm not going to talk about the really technical aspects of how a motor or generator works. There's plenty of information out there already about that kind of thing so I'm, I'm not going to repeat it. There's no need to do that. I'm also going to use the term motor and generator interchangeably. Effectively, it's the same thing. It's not quite true, but usually it is. Almost all motors, if you put electrical energy into them, they turn it into kinetic energy, usually in terms of a rotating shaft. If you rotate the shaft, you get electrical energy out of the back. So a motor is a generator. It's a bit more complicated than that in reality, but essentially that's the, that's the situation. So motor means generator means motor. It's usually easier to get motors that are designed to work as motors and turn the shaft than it is to, to, to buy something that's specifically designed as a generator. It's usually cheaper as well. So, should you use an AC motor or a DC motor? to generate power and the answer is unfortunately like most things in life it depends it depends what you want to do with the generator first of all so a lot of people probably most people want DC power to be the main output of the generator so they're going to charge mobile phones laptops power and music system you know power and amplifier that kind of thing um, and for that the most efficient way to do it is using DC power but you may want AC power you may want to power you might want to power mains powered devices, you know, you might want to plug your ordinary plug-in laptop charger in, you might want to use a, an amp with a plug on it, you might want to do all kinds of stuff, put a blender in, run a fridge, I don't know, power, whatever you like. So it depends what output you want really. So I'm going to, most of my uh, discussion here is assuming that you want DC power, but I will consider the options of AC power output as well. So I'm going to consider three representative examples of motor species. There are lots and lots, and that's another limiting factor on the conversation really. I'm just going to use these three because it just makes the discussion simpler. So we're going to talk about an alternator from a car, so a standard alternator, a DC permanent magnet motor, the most common type of DC motor, and an AC induction motor, so really the most common type of AC motor. They're the three that most people potentially have access to and that want to use for this sort of project. So that's what we're going to discuss. And I'm going to look at pros and cons based on the application to the bike generator project. So obviously for different projects, you're going to have a different set of pros and cons. So let's start with an alternator. I've used an alternator. As you'll know if you've seen the other videos, I've used an alternator on this one. So we may as well start with alternator. So what are the advantages of an alternator? They're cheap. They are easy to get hold of. They're unbelievably robust, very difficult to break. If you think about what an alternator is designed to do, it sits under the bonnet of a car, getting really hot, really cold, getting bashed around all over the place. So you've got to try pretty hard to break an alternator. A bike is not going to break an alternator. So they'll last forever. It'll like last a bike, probably. Um, they usually have a convenient pulley on that side, which fits a drive belt, which will go on a wheel. Generally speaking, they have a good pulley on there. And really important that makes them nice and easy is they have voltage regulation and rectification built into the unit. Now I'm talking here about a standard car alternator. Sometimes motorbike and truck or van alternators are slightly different. Sometimes they have separate circuitry for voltage regulation. But a standard car alternator 
which is what I'd recommend for this process anyway, has voltage regulation and rectification. So rectification means it changes the alternating current, which the alternator produces as standard, and changes it to direct current. Slightly lumpy direct current actually, but it, it effectively changes it to direct current. And the voltage regulation fixes the output voltage. Usually most car alternators are 13.5 to 14.4 volts output because that's the perfect voltage for charging a 12 volt DC battery. So that, that makes it nice and efficient and it means that you can run um, stuff that's designed to run in a car. So it makes it really easy to wire up. Once you've got your alternator on, you can put a standard 12 volt plug socket on there. I don't know if you can see this here, but I'll show some separate photos on there. Standard car plug, uh, and you can plug stuff in. So anything that's designed to work in a car will automatically work from the voltage that the, volt, that the alternator is chucking out. So you can use your um, car adapters for your mobile phone, for a laptop, whatever, so nice and easy. The cons of using an alternator, they're inefficient. That's the main con, really. It's the only serious con, I think, but they're pretty inefficient. So again, if you think about what they're designed to do, they're designed to charge a battery. But car batteries don't have a huge amount of drain on them. So even all the electrics in a modern car don't really take a lot of current. So there's no point having an alternator being really efficient to charge almost nothing, relatively speaking. So they're generally speaking not efficient. More modern alternators are more efficient than older ones because more modern cars do have more electrics in them. Um, so you will see a range of efficiencies, but they generally range from about 33% uh, up to something like 70%, it's probably at the top end, 75% efficiency. And what that means is it, that's the percentage of the power that you put in versus what you get out. So 30, you, on a 33% efficient alternator, you'll get 33% of the energy out in, in electrical energy versus the mechanical energy is input into the device through the pulley. So they're not very efficient. Often that isn't really a problem for this kind of project because you're not looking for, for real efficiency. But if you are looking for real efficiency, alternators may be not the, the, the choice for you. Um, there are two reasons for that inefficiency, as it happens, slight sidetrack, but I'm gonna say it anyway, because I've just noticed I've written it on my notes, so I kind of have to say it. Um, there's the inefficiency of the device itself and the build and there's the inefficiency of the converting AC to DC. So it generates alternating current and it converts it to DC. Now whenever you do that, you get a loss of uh, power basically, uh, loss of energy. So that's where some of the inefficiencies come from. The also the, also the, the a minor con for it is that it doesn't have, because it doesn't have permanent magnets in it, you need to put a very small voltage into it in order to get it started. So you just need a 12 volt battery just to activate the field coil in the alternator. So the field coil creates an electromagnetic field. It's an electromagnet which creates a magnetic field in the alternator and that starts the power generation. Once you've got it running and it's generating power, it will generate its own power. So you don't need to put power into it constantly. You just need that voltage to get it started off. That's not really a major problem, um, but it's worth mentioning. You don't need to do that with a DC motor, for example. So that's an alternator. Um, an AC motor. Now, this is the kind of motor, the, one of the main positives of this is they're virtually free. Often you can just pick these up for free because it's the kind of thing you find in a washing machine, in a lawn mower, that type of thing. So often, if a washing machine breaks, for example, it's very rarely the motor that breaks, it's usually something else. So you can often pull a motor out of a, out of a washing machine. So they're cheap or free to get all of. They're also pretty robust, um, generally last a long time. They're built for, you know, uh, think about a washing machine, does a fair uh, amount of work. Um, they also usually have a pulley on them, which is convenient to use for um, drive belt. So that tends to be quite good. The disadvantage with an AC induction motor, oh, they're more efficient, more efficient as well than an alternator, generally speaking, particularly modern ones. The disadvantage is they don't have any voltage regulation or rectification built in. So you need separate circuitry to stabilize 
the voltage and to make it direct current if you want direct current from it. If you want alternating current as it is your main output, that's not a problem, but you will still need to regulate the voltage. Just means extra faff. Again, you can you can buy kits to do the circuitry. It's not rocket science, but it is a bit of soldering usually. So if you want the easiest option, it's probably not the best. Again, they will need a field coil start because it's uh, an induction motor. So it needs an electromagnet to get the electromagnet to get the magnetic field working. So that's the similar with an alternator. DC motor. So these are super efficient, generally speaking, much more efficient than the other two. They have permanent magnets in, so they don't need any power to get them started. As soon as you turn the shaft, you will get electrical energy out of it. Um, they don't need rectification. This is assuming you want DC power. You don't need to rectify it because it outputs in DC already. So that's very convenient for DC. Um, cons though, sound brilliant and they are very good. They're quite expensive. Certainly compared to the other two, they're pretty expensive. To get one that's robust enough and that generates a sufficient amount of power for the kind of thing you want to use uh, on a bike generator, they are more expensive. Not break the bank expensive, but they're definitely going to cost you more money than an alternator or a washing machine motor. Um, I've written some on my notes, I need to check it. Oh yeah, often you need to faff with a pulley. So if you, on, usually when you buy a motor it will just have a basic shaft or it might have a pulley that isn't really going to be robust enough to use with a, a drive shaft. So you're going to have to get a pulley assembly and separately and fit that on. Uh, not the end of the world, but it's more faff. Um, but very efficient. So the efficiency technicality seesaw, if you will, is kind of the best way to summarize the pros and cons of each. So you've got an alternator, very easy to set up, you whack it on, you attach your drive belt, uh, you get a battery to do the initial field coil and bang, you're away. So very easy, but not that efficient. AC motor, more efficient, but more of a faff. DC motor, much more efficient, but definitely more technical. So you've got a balance, really. If you're looking for ease of use, you want to quickly set up the project, you're not much of an electronics fan, I go for an alternator if you want DC power. Um, definitely the easiest. If you want efficiency, if you're looking to, uh, if you've got a tiny house, that kind of thing, you want to be off grid, you're looking to generate enough power to um, power your life, a minimalist life, DC generator is the way to go because it's super efficient. It is DC, so you will need to make sure that what's, what you're powering is DC coming off it. You can put an inverter on it, which will convert that to AC, but obviously you're going you're gonna to lose efficiency by doing that. AC motor, if you've got one, then it makes sense to use it. So if you've got a washing machine motor, you, you don't need to buy anything, do you? So I would say that's the way to go if you've just already got one. If you've got a broken washing machine somewhere, you can pull the motor out of. Um, there you go. That's your pros and cons. I'm sorry I can't give you a definitive answer on which is the right one. Um, whichever one you do have, you can switch the voltage. So on this machine, uh, you'll see this in the other videos and on the demonstration, but I've got an alternator. It outputs direct current because it's got the regulation built in, but I've also got an inverter on it. So I can run both. I can run stuff direct from the DC power uh, and I can invert it and run alternating current stuff as well. So whatever you do, there's flexibility down the line uh, from it, you know. Hope that's helpful. Do have a look at the other, vid other videos if you haven't seen them. Um, the demo one's pretty good. I'm also going to do some videos about how and why these things work, a bit more technical ones. So uh, look out for them as well. They're probably coming up. Thanks for watching.